Well, good morning and welcome to Hillside Assembly. My name is Eric and I am the lead pastor here. If you're visiting us for the first time this morning, welcome. And we'd love for you to stop by a table in our foyer before you leave the church today to pick up your free gift. If you're visiting us online, we'd love for you to check out our webpage, hillsideassembly.org. You'll find lots of information, how you can connect with the church and other materials to help you in your walk with Christ. At the end of service today, one of our worship leaders will pray over the offering, and then you can give in one of two ways. You can give your tithe and offerings in our giving box in our foyer, or you can go to our webpage, again, at hillsideassembly.org, click on the Giving tab, and you can give online there. I'm going to now turn this over to one of our worship leaders this morning to give you a little more information and also to kickstart our worship experience. Have a wonderful day. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all of the dads out there. I am so glad that you are with us this morning. To open up our service, I'd like to read a scripture verse from John chapter 14, starting with verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so... Would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that that you may be where I am also. I'm going to ask you to stand as we begin our service today. We're going to start with the song, I'll Fly Away. And for worship today, I asked my dad in honor of Father's Day to give me Ten of his favorite worship songs. We're not going to sing all ten of them, <laughs> but I chose five of them today, and I'll Fly Away is one of those songs. So hopefully you dads will enjoy some of my dad's favorite worship songs. But as I thought about this verse here, I'll Fly Away, the next song we're going to sing after that is Come Into His Presence. Someday we're going to be with God in His presence forever. But right now, here on earth, we can spend time in his presence worshiping him. So I want to encourage you. Let's just worship the Lord this morning as we sing these two songs. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. Thanks, Thanks. 
sing it in your heart. If you put in praise, if you put in praise, come into His presence with thanksgiving in your heart. Your voice is raised. If your voice is raised, give glory. God, we thank you for your presence, which is here with us this morning. God, we long to be in your presence. God, we need to be in your presence each and every day. God, remind us that you walk with us wherever we go. And that will also remind us, Lord, that one day we are going to be with you in heaven forever. We're going to fly away. We're going to be with you for eternity. God, thank you for the privilege of being able to worship you this morning. We give you thanks and glory and honor and praise. We commit this service into your hands. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Just want to remind you again that our pastor, Pastor Eric, is on sabbatical. Um, hopefully he is relaxing this morning, <laughs> taking it easy. In his place, we have Pastor Joel Pavia, who is going to be sharing our morning message. So, Pastor Joel, will you come forward and share with us this morning?
tonight. But you know, men don't really mind that. It's kind of like camping. So. Okay. Okay, enough nonsense. I did kind of, this is kind of a first for me that when I put this message, I've been working on this message for off and on for a couple of weeks, collecting some scriptures and writing down ideas and things. And I had all this stuff in a pile, and Rosalie had an appointment down in Mequon this week, so I went with her. She was tied up for a couple hours, so I went over to Panera Bread, got a table in the corner, and put this whole thing together. So if you don't like it, it's Panera Bread atmosphere that got into me or something. I'm talking about a man and his God. Um, some men serve a fabulous God. A lot of you, I'm sure. Some men have a horrible God because they don't know him. They don't think he can do anything. They're not sure he's capable of anything. A lot of men kind of think God maybe created all this, wound it up, and took off, and the universe is kind of winding down or whatever. Uh, a lot of different views of what God is like. Uh, let's look at the scriptures I have from Psalm 36, uh, the first seven verses, where David, a man, he's kind of writing about the God he serves and what kind of a God that is. Psalm 136. Give thanks to the, look, look at what he says about his God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. So he, his God is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to to the God of gods, and under he's the only one. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. He's saying a lot of things about his God. To whom alone does great wonders. God is still doing them. His love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. His love endures forever who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. And one more. Who made the great lights. In other words, his God can do all this. He's, he's the Lord of lords, the God of gods. He created everything. He had a big God, a wonderful God. He knew who his God was. I said before, some men have a, a pretty small God. They never learned to know him. They never came into a relationship with him like hopefully we all have. And see, sinful man has always tried to whittle God down to man size, especially in the generation we're living in. Whittle God down, sinful man wants to bring God down kind of into our image. Instead of us being created in the image of God, they've wanted to create God in the image of man. And he's kind of there maybe, but he's, there's not much to him and there's not much going on there. And uh, Romans 1, to 23 talks about this kind of a God. Let's look there. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile, and in their foolish hearts were darkened. That's the results of all this. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images, made to look like mortal human beings or birds or animals, or reptiles. Isn't it strange when people demote God, what they come up with? I mean, we talked a little bit last week of what happened in the uh, time when Moses went up to Mount Sinai to get the law. He was gone a few weeks, 40 days. People lost their thought of God. They lost their focus on God. They'd get all their jewelry together, melt it down, and come up with a calf. And so now they're worshiping something they made, bringing down God and the image of man. Uh, I mean, it happened all over the world. It's still happening today. It happens in our society. We have worship a lot of things, some people do, besides God. And a lot of denominations today that started out in some revival fires no longer think God can do a whole lot. He's not too involved in our lives. He's not here touching us, saving us, forgiving us, healing us. No, that's, that's not the God we have anymore. Sinful man has done a great thing to get rid of God, and they're kind of happy for it. I see, our world today, as we know, is divided into two camps. Not just white and black, or communism, or other ideologies, or it's not just rich and poor, or uh, 
ignorant, wise. They just divide into camps. If some are going in a rapture and some aren't, okay. And I'm going in the first load. I'm planning on that one. See, we have to. Our world had to get rid of God to someday worship an antichrist. The same people that worship the antichrist are not the people that worship God. And so the people that worship God, the men that worship God, this is Men's Day. This is true for ladies, but that was last month, okay? You had your shot on Mother's Day, Women's Day. Um, you have to get rid of God somehow. And the world is doing, we're doing that in, in our nation probably quicker than most. Demoting God, getting him out of our schools, getting him out of our courts, getting him out of our morality. We can't teach morality much because everybody has their own ideas of what's right and wrong. Getting them out of sex education, do what you want. Uh, that has to happen if this country is going to worship the Antichrist someday, and they're going to. So we get rid of God. God's men, God's people are going into rapture, and the world's going to be left to the thing they thought they wanted so bad, and uh, I guess to belittle God kind of caters to the intellect of some men, I guess. I don't know. Um, we're living in this, this cancel society now, cancel everything. I read yesterday, I think it was on Facebook. If it's on Facebook, it has to be true, right? <laughs> some singer who i never heard of, you, some of the younger people probably, I wish I remembered the name, I didn't write it down. Some singer that I've never heard of has now got the attention of the news because she says we've got to get rid of our flag. Our flag is racist. It's too much white in the flag. It's, I mean, it goes on and on and on of what we're doing to our country. It's terrible. And I, I, God needs men who know him and can trust him and put God first and follow God. I want to finish strong, folks, and I want you to finish strong. I want us men and women, that was last month, to finish strong, okay? And uh, God's word is clear how we can do that. And I want to look at Joshua for a moment and look at something that we... I think I preached about Joshua six years ago. Nobody remember that, but I did. Uh, Joshua 24, 14. Uh, just gives us a little insight of what's going on there. Now, fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Okay. If serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. He says a couple of things there. Talk, talking to us, he said, sometimes we have to throw away some stuff. Uh, and he talks about what they could throw away. Your gods, where you came from and the stuff. Guys, we have to throw away some stuff. Now, at home, I can only throw away stuff in the garage, and we don't have a garage, we've got a carport, or the attic, which we don't have either. So I've kind of got rid of, I can't throw anything away anymore. But spiritually, we can. Throw away, throw away, get rid of stuff that's hanging on and dragging us backwards and ruining us, ruining our influence. Throw it away, unforgiveness. Throw it away, things we put before God. Just throw them away, things that... It tempt you in your life. Throw it away. Pornography. Throw it away. You know, almost every man in America is into some kind of pornography. And a good share of Christian men. Some of you guys are into pornography. I don't know who you are. I don't need to know who you are. Throw it away. Anything that tempts you, throw it away. That, that our lives are clean before God. We get rid of these things and let them go out of our lives. And bad attitudes. I mean, just it's kind of nice sometimes to do some house cleaning inside. You know, once in a while we go out and do some house cleaning in the garage or the carport or we got a storage building. It's pay 50 bucks a month to store all our junk. And uh, you know what that's like. And it's kind of nice to go in there. We're doing, throwing stuff away and giving it away and selling it or taking it to goodwill. We got a lady now who's raising a lot of money for a mission field. We're giving. It's kind of nice to get rid of stuff. Well, guys, in here, in here, we need to get rid of stuff. And for the glory of God, for our growth in Christ of keeping our lives strong with him, throw it away. 
There's some verses in Corinthians that I didn't send, I guess. But it talks about we need to demolish and pull down some things that bother us. And he talked very directly. He talked about this demolishing, casting down, pulling down some things. And the NIV says, pull down those arguments. King James says, pull down those imaginations. The Greek word for that is the word logosmos, which means, which we get logic out of. Our word logic comes from that word. In other words, Satan knows how to be logical in tempting us. He knows what fits you or me. Yesterday we were at a place, a thing in Malpaca called Strawberry Fest. It's, you know, 50 or 100 people come with their little booths and they have music and food and we always go down there, roam around, don't buy a thing, eat strawberry shortcake and go home. <laughs> I was going to pick up something at a store downtown, so I just, I left Strawberry Fest and was walking to this store and I walked by a, a tavern. I think it's called Wapaka Pub. Doors open, I look in there. It's kind of dingy, it doesn't smell real. You know, Satan's not going to say to me, hey, Joel, go in there, let's have a couple drinks. It's not going to work. I've never been in a tavern. I don't care. I don't want to go in there. I mean, I have no idea. Satan's not going to do that to me. He's going to do something logical. Let's, let's take a man that was an alcoholic for 20 years. He got saved. Let's say he got saved last Sunday, delivered from alcoholism. He walks past a bar. Now, this might work on him. Hey, Fred, just go in there. You know, your friends are in there. If you don't, they're going to think you're a Jesus freak. Just go in there and have some fun, drink a Coke. It seems logical, doesn't it? Well, you may go in there and fall off the wagon again. I mean, Satan knows how to get to you or to me and what seems logical. That's where that word comes from, logismus. Pull down those logical things that Satan want to, wants to, don't go for them. A big one, as I said before, is pornography. Men are very visual. And pull it down. Get it beneath the blood. Let God take care of us. And get, if we want to do some cancel culture, that's one of them. The things that are not good for us. And um, Last Sunday I talked about how little things seem little. And if they're not quite right, a little thing doesn't bother you so much. Well, just a little. We talked about that bucket. A small hole in the bottom of a bucket or a bucket with no bottom in it, they're going to get just as empty. It takes longer. I thought of another illustration about a, a tire in your car. A tire with a pinhole leak will get just as empty as a blowout. But it takes longer. It happens in our lives, guys. Uh, blowouts. I don't know that I've ever seen a Christian blowout. In other words, in one day, they hate God, they turn their back on God, they walk away from God, and it's all done, bang! I'm sure it's happened, but I, that's not usually what happens. I've seen a lot of slowouts. Well, just a little bit here and a little bit there, and nothing. I'm thinking of blowouts. This has nothing to do with my message, I just thought of something. Years ago, we were going to visit Rosalie's parents and sister and brother in Kansas. So we had the car filled with our, our kids and our luggage, and we were getting near Great Bend, Kansas, which is near her home. And I felt this bump, bump, bump. So I pulled over. I may have told this story six years ago. I don't know. But you won't care. <clears throat> anyway, I go, here's this bump. I thought, oh, I'll just drive slow, see if I can get into Great Bend. I know they have some tire dealers. And I went another mile or two, and the thing blew up. Happened to be a little wayside, and I pull right into there. Boom, boom, boom. Take the luggage out of the trunk, take out the little spare tire, the donut, put it on, it's flat. It never been out of the car, it's perfectly clean, it's flat. So I'm standing there wondering, I hate to leave Rosalie and our kids out here in the middle of nowhere at a wayside. Uh, and while I'm trying to figure out what to do, in comes a great big semi pulls right in next to us. He's loaded with brand new Pontiacs. I had a Pontiac. 
much older than those of them. <laughs> he said, what's going on? I said, uh, I got a blowout. My, my donut's flat. He says, give me that donut. He grabs it. He climbs up on his rig like an orangutan, opens up the trunk of a Pontiac, throws mine in, takes out a new one. He said, here, they'll never know the difference. <laughs> Yes, he is. <laughs> Nothing to do with my sermon, but it came to mind. Guys, I'm worried about slow outs. Okay. A little compromise here, no big deal. Maybe not done another one here, and you make a couple of those, and it's not so hard to make a few more. I don't want to go that route. I don't want to go where these things go. I just. Not what I want. Uh, the last part of J uh, Joshua 24, verse 15, here's what he says. He says, don't, don't go with the other gods. Don't. But he said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. What I like about this, Joshua wasn't waiting around to be politically correct. or He wasn't waiting around to see which way the wind was blowing. What do the majority of the men say here? He just... Flat out says it up front first. This is what we're going to do. You see, people follow leadership. He was a leader of the nation. He's a leader of his own family. People follow leadership and just go for it. And, you know, we read before that if serving the Lord seems undesirable, he said in the other verse, uh, the Hebrew word for undesirable means breaking to pieces or good for nothing. If serving the Lord seems good for nothing, then this is what I want to do. We're going to serve God. I'm going to take leadership here, he said. He was leading Israel. They needed a leader. They needed a godly leader. They needed People follow leaders. Jesus called us what? Yeah, not pigs. What did you say? <laughs> sheep. Pigs would work occasionally. but Sheep have to have a shepherd. I've been to Israel many times, and you get out in the middle of nowhere, and there's still some shepherds out there. Sheep don't know where to find the right kind of water. He leaves them beside quiet waters, still waters. Sheep can't go drink at a fast-flowing fast river. All that wool and buoyancy, there they go. They don't know how to eat properly. If they can find green grass, they eat it and kill the roots, and it's gone. Shepherd, I need a sh shepherd, but we're, we're, we're followers. I, might, I saw some specials on TV recently, historical f specials about Hitler. I thought, one of the most evil men ever to be on this earth. Millions of people follow, he's a leader. Horrible direction. How many remember Charles Manson, some of the older people? I saw some study about him the other day. I think he's been dead a few years now. Charles Manson had followers. People follow. They want to follow something. Here's this evil man. Every year or so, he, his parole board would come up to see if he could be paroled, and they never did parole him. But every time that came up, there's a crowd of people at the prison carrying signs. I mean, people follow something. They'll follow evil. That's what they say. They'll follow good things. They'll follow godly leadership also. He put his... His name on the line, we're going to do this. We're going to serve God. Me and my husband, that's what we're going to do. Well, let's look at verse 24. Uh, that's the last verse we're going to look at today. No, that's, you don't have 24. What did 24 say? Oh, yeah. After he said, we're going to serve God, that's where we're going. The rest of the people said, we're going to serve God too. They followed a leader. They followed a godly man who, who said it first. And they all said, we're going to follow. We'll do the same thing too. What we do is almost more important than what we say. I had a birthday party a week or so ago. My sister and her husband and a bunch of other people were there. And we, I was talking to my sister. We're talking about my dad, our dad. I said, you remember what dad used to do early in the morning? She said, yeah. I said, my bedroom's upstairs, and our bathroom was downstairs. 
If I had to go to the bathroom early in the morning, like 6 o'clock, so, I'd creep down there and go and go back to bed. But I could see through the living room. I could see my dad in there, total dark, with a lamp on. He's reading his Bible. Now, I'm sure my dad told me a hundred times, son, read your Bible and pray. I know he did, but I don't remember any. I remember seeing him. That was 70 some years ago. My sister said, you know what? I remember the same thing. I remember seeing him kneel by that chair and pray. He may have told me to do it. I know he did. Don't remember it. But that image I'll never forget. My dad reading his Bible and praying before he went to work for the day. Leadership. Guys, we're leaders. We're leaders in our families. We're leaders in our church. So the ladies, but that was last month, okay. <laughs> I, just, I just want to conclude this portion of the service. I'd like for every male, 18 years of old or older, just come stand here. I just want to have prayer with you before we go on in the service. Robbie, well, you're already coming. Good for you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to pray for you. Okay. Look at this. Thank you, Jesus. There's enough of us here to turn this city around. Men of prayer, fasting and prayer, men in the Word, men that are committed to Christ. We're not all called to be evangelists. And we're not all called to be extroverts. I'm a, I'm a total introvert when I'm not standing here. Some people, I, I'm not, I can't get out there and, you know, God needs some introverts. Because if a total extrovert comes up to a person, they're going to turn them off. You gotta get saved today, brother. You know Jesus. Okay. I can't do that. Some people can, and some people respond to that. And some people respond to all of us. We have different gifts. We have different people we know. We used to call it web evangelism. We all have a different web of people we know that none, none of these other men know very well. Could be relatives. Could be places you work, play golf, get your car fixed, wherever. God has a plan for all of us. and if, In this church, yes. We need you guys, okay? God needs you guys. God needs you in this world, in this community. And Father, I just thank you for these men that stand here. What a, what a beautiful picture. Men that know you. God, I pray, will know you more. I want to know you more. I want to finish strong. I want to finish being an anointed man of God. Not just in the pulpit, but wherever I go during the week. God, touch these men. Empower them. I thank you for them. I thank you for their stand for you today. And God, help us to move on in the Spirit. Bless these men. God, I pray you'll rain on them. Pour down your blessing upon these men. Pour down your anointing upon them, Lord, as we, we go forward in these last days before the rapture takes place. God, I thank you for this opportunity to be here with this church. My church today. These men, God, lead on, O King Eternal. Yes. We want to follow you. We want to go with you. We want to go with the anointing of God. I pray for that in the name of Jesus. Men said what? Say amen, men. Amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. I love it. God bless you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Praise God. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. We're going to continue now with our worship on into the rest of our service. <clears throat> to conclude our service, we're going to sing three more worship songs. I encourage you just to continue to worship the Lord however you feel comfortable. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you can sit. If you want to come to the altar, you can come to the altar. But let's just continue to worship the Lord. As we sing this song, It is well with my soul. 
are facing, we Hallelujah. say, it is Hallelujah. well with my soul because your presence Hallelujah. is with us. God, we thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. God, this is holy ground that we are standing on. In his presence there is joy beyond measure. And at his feet peace of mind can still be found. out to Jesus, reach out and claim it, child, you're standing on holy ground, oh, sing it in reverence and awe of him, we are standing on holy ground. Just worship on your own now as we play it. Thank you, Lord. We oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Lift up your name. I exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. Sing that chorus just one last time with me. We are standing.
Jesus. Aren't you thankful for the presence of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Oh, we need him every day. We need his presence. We're going to conclude our service now by singing another one of my dad's favorite songs. And we're going to end on a high note. Victory in Jesus. Anybody got victory this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to sing all three verses as we conclude our service. I'll pray at the end of the service, but I just want to remind you that if you have an offering this morning, you can give it Thank in you, the Lord. box in the back. Thank you for giving and worshiping the Lord in that way. Let's stand as we sing this song, Victory in Jesus. for the victory that you give us this morning. God, you have victory over sickness. You have victory over sadness. God, you have victory over, over everything that we face through temptations. God, thank you that you give us that victory. Lord, I pray that this week we would walk in that victory. Remind us each day as we read our Bible and as we spend time in your presence that we walk in victory because of what Jesus has done for us. Lord, as we go our way, we will celebrate this day because you are our Lord and Savior. We commit this day into your hands. In Jesus' name, 
And everybody said, amen. Have a great week. See you next Sunday, everyone.